All right, good morning, everyone. It is Saturday, and you'll have to excuse the odd surroundings here. I am uh, taking care of getting my car inspected, and uh, that's kind of necessary. So, all right, so let us talk about last night. Uh, I got my notes in my lap here. Uh, yeah, great start, not a good ending. Um, Carolina is a tough team. Uh, they are one of the top teams in the, uh, FPHL. And despite what minor league Grando says, um, they're not, over, they're not overperforming. Uh, they're not getting lucky. This is a good team. Um, uh, very good team. So, um, I feel like we took the loss. This is something that we can learn from and adjust. And, uh, hey, we got two more cracks at them this weekend and then a couple more cracks down at their place in a couple weeks. All right, so we got off to the hot start. Uh, Yates with that beautiful cross-ice pass over to Lewis for the first goal. Uh, Ivashkin makes it 2 nothing. Uh, the power play, and uh, you know, they still took care of business, I feel. I know Carolina scored the goal with uh, Batita um, later on in the first period, but I feel like the first period, we definitely won. Uh, you know, we played pretty even with, uh, with a team that, again, is one of the top teams in the league. Uh, then the wheels came off, uh, well, it was three to one very early and, uh, yeah, it's not that we stopped playing. It's that I, I think part of what Carolina was dealing with was maybe some travel leg syndrome, uh, in the first period, uh, as they came out in the second period and got going, they got back to their usual game, which is a very tenacious four check. Uh, and I mean, they have so many offensive weapons. They don't have to rely on just Gus Ford uh, or Keplinger or you know, whoever. They, they've got so many different people that can score. I mean, you look at their whole roster and they're stacked. Um, so, anyway, Carolina started playing their game, getting themselves back in. Of course, they got those two really quick goals. The shorthanded goal was kind of a moral backbreaker uh, for us, um, or an emotional backbreaker. And then Binghamton, we just didn't adjust. Um Obviously, Carolina got their game going, and we never seemed to formulate a plan as to how to break through that. Um, Don Oliveri had a very poor game, yes. Um, <laughs> but you can't put the blame all on one person. You know, there's 18 people on the ice, or 17 people on the ice. So... Uh, it just wasn't our night. We just got beat. Um, so hopefully uh, the effort will be better tonight. Um, we've got to utilize our teammates more. Um, there's too much pond hockey mentality going on. You know, carrying in the puck, skating in the phone booth, um, holding on to the puck as long as you can, and then there's no support. So you have no nobody to pass to. Uh, first of all, you got to look for the pass. And second of all, you need to complete the pass. Uh, and part of completing a pass is the intended recipient needs to be in the right place at the right time. And the passing lanes just weren't created by the Black Bears. So anyway... Um, We've had worse. Um, we've had much worse efforts. Um, 
and I think we'll do better tonight. Um, I expect a couple of changes in the lineup. Color, of course, uh, Jake Schultz is going to be back, so that's awesome. We need his toughness, especially taking care of Schnapp, who was uh, obviously his job was to get in people's grill, and he succeeded. Um, obviously, he didn't bait us into any bad penalties. However, uh, I think I think Schnapp got in our heads a little bit. So when we have uh, Schultz back in the lineup, I also anticipate Coachman being back in the lineup. Uh, that provides physical toughness, yes, but also mental toughness. So I, I, I think that's going to happen. Um, I, I would be very surprised if uh, both Kochi and Schultz weren't in the lineup tonight. Uh, I'm assuming probably if you bring in those two, you're probably resting uh, JT Walters and uh, Olivieri tonight. Um, Olivieri, he's going to get his game back. Uh, it was just last night was not a good night for him, uh, but that's not the player that he typically is. Uh, if you look at his, his, if you look at his record uh, and his resume, um, he's a good defenseman. It just didn't show up last night. All right. Uh, so obviously, you know, the big boost emotionally was Cam Yarwood coming back. I thought for sure he was still a couple weeks away. So it's great that he's back in the lineup and he looked great. Um, as horrid as taking the shot to the face was, the second it happened, I knew, you know, okay, he's going to be off for a few shifts. He'll be back. Uh, and he was. Um, so, uh, you know, it, it's, it's great to have that, that defensive depth back. Um, I'm also kind of expecting probably Taylor Joseph is going to get the start tonight. Um, I haven't. Talk to Coach Sherwood about that, but it's it's just an assumption. Um, not sure if McVeigh will get the night off and then Fourier will be backing up. Excuse me. Okay, I, I've got to say I have to uh, apologize. I did find out it is Fourier, and at first I was told it was Fourier, so that's how I've been pronouncing it. It is Jeremy Fourier, so got to correct that. All right, um, Jurich because some people still haven't seen the memo. And uh, Brooks Hill mentioned this on the YouTube uh, podcast last night. Jurich's timetable for a return is March 17th. He's going to be out the rest of this weekend. He will be out the next two weeks on the Southern trips. He, and uh, the the 17th is the goal against Elmira in Elmira. All right. Um, Let's see. Uh, do, 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 do. Just going through my notes. Um, okay. Um, yeah, rematch tonight, 7 o'clock. So, uh, again, I think we're going to have a better effort. Uh, elsewhere in the Fed. Ah, uh, the Fed. <laughs> okay, so Elmira forgot their jerseys. Some of you posted stuff on Facebook and it was just like, oh, man. Yeah, the Fed, Fed team's doing Fed things. Um, yeah, so Elmira forgot their jerseys, had all their equipment except for somehow their jerseys and their socks. So they had to use <laughs> uh, gear from the old Fraser Roller Hockey Club. And, uh, you know, the, the Rockers were gracious enough to pull that out of their hats. Um, yeah, not a good night for Elmira. Yeah, they forget the shirts and then they lose eight to two. Um, other notable moment in this game was, um, uh, Rockers goalie, Trevor Babin, first game playing since the suspension, gets a 10 minute misconduct for deliberately throwing equipment. Ah, uh, the Fed. Okay. Um, Danbury. Danbury wins 4-1. to one. I'll report here on 
Not really surprising. Um, the Mad Hatter, a.k.a. Uh, Billy McCurry, got himself ejected again. Second time in eight days. Fourth time for the year. Um, and that's all I'm going to say about that. The Mad Hatter. Uh, anyway, uh, so Danbury does separate a little bit in the standings from us. Another three points earned. Uh, so that is what it is. Okay. Uh, elsewhere, uh, let's see. Uh, Watertown, Delaware. Watertown gives up the first goal and then scores six unanswered goals. And in a moment of poetic justice, uh, last goal was scored by Charlie Penn's Jr. against Charlie Penn's Sr. club. I wonder if uh, Penn's Sr. ever got his TV back. Uh, so Watertown wins 6-1. to one. <laughs> And, uh, yeah, Tr uh, Trevor Martin is up for a while with the Reading Royals. Um, he's actually with the team. He's not just an e-bug. So, uh, yeah, that's... Uh, that's going to be a serious problem for Delaware. All right, last game of the day was uh, the server drivings uh, going down the Mississippi. That was a close game, 5-4 to four in a shootout, um, and that was crazy. Uh, goaltender for Mississippi was Anthony D'Alozio, who had to fill in last minute. Um Mississippi's really having a problem with their uh, with their goalies, with uh, injury and illness. So yeah, uh, Dialozio ended up making 38 saves. Fantastic effort. Um, the first line of Yevdokimov, Sam Turner, and Liriakos provided three of the four goals for Mississippi. Fantastic. So that was really something. Again, went to shootout, so Mississippi picks up a point. Now, despite the fact that they picked up a point, with Carolina winning uh, in regulation time, they have officially clinched a playoff spot. So now we have in the Continental Division, we have uh, playoff spots locked up by Columbus and the Carolina and in the Empire, Danbury and Binghamton. So that is that. All right, so... We've got uh, we've got ourselves another game tonight, another chance to uh, get a big win, and I think we can. Um, yeah, again, in spite of Carolina controlling play for approximately thirty-five minutes of last night's game, um, I think the teams are fairly evenly matched. Um, oh yeah. The other thing that I wanted to mention, yeah, everybody uh, online was kind of going, oh, we're only one for nine in the power play. Keep in mind, Carolina, their penalty kill has been running around 87 to 88% for weeks now. Um, <laughs> somehow, Columbus is actually better in penalty kill percentage. But, uh, yeah, this is not new. Uh, Carolina has only surrendered 26 power play goals all year. So, um, you know, they get in the box. They're not hurting. All right, so that's that. So hopefully, better result tomorrow. We will have the This Week with Black Bears podcast on Spotify tomorrow. I'm also going to do a, uh, a short video, but it's not going to post until late because I want to talk about the Sunday game, which, of course, is at 3 o'clock. So uh, we will... See you here then. In the meantime, um, look for the This Week with Black Bears podcast tomorrow, posting uh, late morning sometime, late morning, early afternoon. All right. Thank you. Have yourself a wonderful weekend, and we will catch you again later. Make sure to hit like and subscribe, all that fun jazz, and thank you so much for watching. This is Gary Ryan for Black Bears.